Which microphone should you buy for your educational YouTube videos? Should you buy a lab mic? Should you buy a shotgun microphone? Or is there a secret option number three? <laughs> now stick around because aside from that advice, I've got one tip that I always use my best tip for making sure your videos sound great on YouTube. And as ever, there are links to all the products in the descriptions below. So you're listening to the shotgun microphone which is mounted on top of the camera and that's quite all right because I'm really quite close to this camera at the moment. And now you're listening to the lav mic which is on my lapel here. And well, I hope you can see there's a difference because this microphone is so close. So now I've moved my camera right away across the room and now listening to that shotgun microphone, how does that sound? Compared to the lav mic which is right here on my collar. So if you've got a wired lav mic, that's great. But now I'm a distance away from the microphone and that's going to be a bit of an issue. So is there a different option I can use to enable me to get the best sound quality from this microphone by having it closer to my face? So listening to this shotgun microphone you perhaps hear is a bit more of an echo, a bit more reverb. It's not quite as good quality as it was when it was closer to my mouth. My study is not a bad environment for sound because there's lots of books, there's lots of other materials that are absorbing the sound and minimizing that echo, that reverb, those reflections which cause poor quality sound. But if you're in any kind of room that's even larger than this, then having a shotgun microphone above the camera that distance away is going to be a bit difficult. So you want to get away to actually move the microphone closer to you. So there's a couple of options. So these are the Rode Wireless Go system. So now you're listening to me through the Rode Wireless Go system and it is in itself, it is a lav mic and it can clip just onto a collar or onto a buttonhole on a shirt. You can do this pretty inconspicuously, it doesn't look great the way it is now. But hopefully you're getting the idea of how it sounds just with a really quick setup, one button to pair them, plug it in like a normal microphone and you're done. So let me know in the comments what you think of the different microphones that I'm showing you today. So remember in this idea that the closer the microphone is to someone's mouth, the better the sound quality is going to be because you're not going to get so much of the background noise. Essentially, you're not going to have to apply so much gain to make your voice the right level in your sound file afterwards. So is there a way that we can combine the best of both worlds, the directional nature of the shotgun mic and the closeness of a lav mic? So the video mic go can just be connected by an ordinary stereo jack cable into the transmitter part, which I did have on my lapel a moment ago, and that is now transmitting the audio from the shotgun microphone, which is mounted by the wonder of cinema on this boom arm, which is just a tripod, which has the ability to go across to one side. And that is transmitting back to my camera. So this, this is secret option number three, which has the microphone much closer to my face, the camera's further away, and hopefully now you can hear the difference between that. And I'm hopeful that you can certainly hear that, a difference between having the lapel mic, a difference between having the shotgun mic further away, and certainly the difference between just the microphones on my phone, which you were just listening to there. And of course, we don't need to have that in shot, we can just get rid of that by the wonders of cinema and now you don't know where the audio is coming from and I don't have this ugly boom arm in my shop. So let me know what you think, which option do you think is best? I did promise my best tip for making your voice sound great from any microphone at all and that tip is compression. Now all the microphones you've heard so far have had compression applied in Premiere Pro on that soundtrack and that's going to bring up the quieter tones and it's going to bring down the louder tones so it makes the voice sound much more consistent in loudness. Also, it's going to bring up those bass notes a little bit, which makes my voice sound a little bit more like it sounds in my head. Because I know that all of us have a bit of an issue when we first hear our voice on camera, we don't sound quite how we expect to. There is, of course, secret option number three, and that is a USB microphone. This is a USB microphone. This is the one I recommend. This is the Rode NT-USB and you can buy this stand as well for it. Now, USB microphones are the option to go for if you're recording audio straight into your PC. So if you're using OBS, then definitely go for the USB microphone. This is the Rode NT-USB and it's just recording directly into Adobe Premiere Pro into the computer. For me, I think this sounds the best out of all of the options that I've got and I'd use it all the time if it was able to be plugged into my cameras. The other option, which is a really professional option, is to go for an XLR microphone. XLR microphones have phantom power, which essentially just means that they have much greater tonal range, so they can record much louder and much quieter sounds, and you have much more room to get it wrong or right in edit, and you're going to get much more clean and crisp audio from them. So let me know what you think of each one, and let's just test out what do you think of that compared to the actual on-camera microphones. This is the built-in camera microphone, it's a stereo microphone on top of the camera and with it further away. 
and it should improve. That sound quality will improve by being closer to the camera, but it's still nowhere near the quality from either the shotgun microphone or the lav mic. If you like this type of video, if you're enjoying my sort of tech review videos, this year I'm looking to share more about how I've gone about creating this YouTube channel so that you can emulate the type of thing in your future. Thanks a lot for watching Google Physics.